Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at touch automation. In a previous episode, we looked at latch preview automation mode. Latch preview automation mode allows you to audition fader movements before committing to writing them. Touch automation mode allows you to write a fader and write automation, and the moment you let go of the fader, it returns to its original position. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is a cover of American Psycho by The Misfits. A friend and I recorded this last week, and I'm still in the process of mixing. As I listen to the playback of my drum performance, the snare hits during the verse are a little bit weak when compared to the slower parts. I was able to get a little bit more consistent volume by adding heavy compression, but at the same time it could stand to have some automation. Since I'm happy with the volume of the snare throughout the rest of the track, I can use touch automation to help better control the volume of the snare during the verses. I'll start by switching my mixer to a layout that's a bit more conducive to this for me. Now if you watched the last video, we worked with screen sets and cycle actions to create a mixer view that was very similar to what you might find in Pro Tools. If you'd like to know more about how I created this particular layout, leave a comment below. This particular layout gives me a single focused fader on my right side, so it's very easy for me to grab that fader and move it for the purpose of capturing automation. I'll scroll up in my track control panel to the desired track, which in this case will be my snares folder. That contains both my snare top and bottom. By default, the global automation mode in Reaper is set to trim or trim read. This means that the faders are pretty much representing what they're showing. Any movement that you make on the faders is static and that's precisely where it stays. Now that changes if you have automation. If you have automation written, the faders will read that automation, but then they will trim by the amount that the fader is set to. This will make more sense in a moment. For the time being, I'll switch my automation mode to touch. And with touch automation mode activated, you'll notice that all of my faders have turned yellow. This means that they're ready for writing automation. With this particular mode engaged, I can simply play the track and move the desired fader and it will write that automation, but as soon as I release the fader, it will return to its original position. We can see now that my snares fader is currently at minus 7.14 dB. I'd like to start the song a little bit before the verse, and once we hit the verse, I'd like to automate my fader to bring that snare up just a little bit during the verse. Let's give it a try. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed that, but once we got to the end of the verse, I let go of the fader, and if I make this envelope a little bit bigger, we can see that my movements with the fader were recorded, and here we see right at the end when I released, we return back to the minus 7.14. Let's take it back a bit, switch our global automation mode to read. Now, when you have the automation mode set to read, just as it suggests, your faders will move according to automation that's written. If there's no automation written yet for a particular fader, it will simply stay at its current value. With read mode engaged, if you watch my fader to the right, it will move in accordance to this automation. Now, if I don't like the automation that was written, I can right click and draw a box around each of these points and delete them, or I can simply play through the track again and with the automation mode set back to touch, rewrite the automation. Let's try again. I think I like that a bit better. Let's preview that once again. That sounds a lot better to me. I can hear the snare a lot better throughout the verse and then it drops back to its previous level once we hit the interlude in the pre-chorus. As you can see, touch automation is a fantastic way to move small portions of a song and quickly return to its original position. If you'd like to learn more about automation modes, leave a comment below. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon link below. 
I don't have any coffee, but I still like it. You know, it's, um, if somebody wants to buy me a cup, I mean, I'll, I'll drink it. Also, check the link in the description to join us on Discord. We'll see you next time. I wonder how much of this I can get away with playing without this video being demonetized. Let's just give it a try.